Kevin Leahy, um, I got here, I suppose, oh, I, I started my started my adventure career, I suppose, maybe six, seven years ago. I left Australia and uh, went to South America and ended up doing a lot of like long hikes and treks and climbs and loads of different types of adventures and thought like that's really, that's really life for me, a lifestyle for me kind of thing. And uh, from Killarney, so I was moving back here and I saw the Kerry Way and I just saw it and wanted to do it. So something inside me said, yeah, let's do that. And so I did that once and then I did it a second time and branched out into some adventure racing like cycling kayaking and running mm-hmm. and yeah slowly but surely year after year i've been kind of just taking on bigger and bigger and bigger adventures so just this year was kind of my biggest one so far it was two 500k races up in the up in the arctic so there was a 500k kilometer race up in uh, the yukon in north of canada and then three weeks later i flew to sweden and did a 500 kilometer race up there <laughs> crazy man like when, when i just hear, hear the numbers like that's also like mind-boggling like um you mentioned also the carry way like for for people that know what's the carry way ultra uh the carry way i suppose we're in carry so the carry way is the local ultra marathon here so i suppose it's also ireland's longest foot race it's a 190 kilometer foot race all around the, uh, a famous walking trail around mm-hmm. Kerry. so typically typically it's the, the cut after the race is 40 hours uh, some of the winner, winners did it last year in, in sub 24. Whoa. Yeah. So some people do 200 kilometers in less than 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. I was one of them. I was one of them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah, that's I crazy. Was, say, I was probably the seventh person to do it within, within the 24 hours. But like wow. last year was exceptionally good conditions. It was mm-hmm. really, really, really a fast year for the race kind of thing. It had been dry for a couple of weeks leading up to it. Mm. Did you do any sports before going in these like ultra long races? Like, is there anything that people that get into it somehow prepare? Or? Um, no, personally, I didn't. I suppose when I was younger, I, I was never a runner. I played football, soccer, mm-hmm. uh, quite sporty with that. But then, you know, it hit like 2021 and all that kind of fell away. I was in Australia and not really doing much, falling in and out of like bouts in the gym and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, like the January stuff. But that, yeah, yeah. Never really getting did. the six packs by summer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never really did anything consistently when I was in Australia, but I suppose I, I, I knew I wanted to, so that was why I kind of cut the toys with Australia mm-hmm. and was setting about kind of setting up a new life for me again and, and I knew it was going to be focused around adventures kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the, these races in nature are, are amazing. Like uh, I only did one that was like really long like that. Well, not long like that. Uh, but it, it was super fun. I fell in love with it and I'm definitely going to do more. Uh, and the, your tips help there really a lot. Um, for someone listening who's maybe interested in going into something like that, what would you say were some, would be some of the starter tips for someone who's just getting into it? Um, starter tips, I suppose, from an injury point of view, you don't do too much too soon. You know, don't, don't set your goal too big. Don't say, I want to do a 200 kilometer race in three months' time. You got you to build up week after week, you know, 10% a week mm-hmm. and taking rest weeks every fourth week. Um, and just listen to your body as well. You know, if you're pushing it, if your body's feeling okay, you can increase the intensity, you can increase the, the volume of training you're doing. But if you're feeling it, really, really feeling it the morning after runs, and then your body's probably not ready, it hasn't fully adapted yet. So you just kind of increase slowly, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and don't. You don't have to push it. It's like for me, a lot of the vast majority of my training is, is very slow training, zone one, zone two, heart rate kind of thing, mm-hmm. especially with this endurance. You don't need to do a lot of fast, fast, fast training kind of thing. It's all about building up your kind of your diesel engine, as you say, building up your 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 uh, metabolic heart rate. So you're, you're burning fats rather than carbohydrates. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like just taking it, enjoying training, not like if you're, if you're training for endurance, if you can't breathe through your nose, I would suggest you're probably training too fast maybe do one fast session a week mm-hmm. um so yeah there's a couple of tips mm. and yeah just listen, listen listen to your body especially with diet and stuff as well try a few things see what works you might need salt you might not need salt mm-hmm. and figure out how much water you need per hour and a half day how much water you need per hour on a cold day mm. yeah. yeah that's true um usually people get into uh running like that for weight loss but um i did it with my friend just to you know kind of see how it would work out you know because we never done such a huge race and um it was 150k the um, quest of um Bera. Bera. yeah and uh, we had cycling and kayaking and running as well and um one of his problems was that uh his knees were hurting you know and uh he tried to lose as much weight as he could in a short period of time and running is usually great for that and it was summer it was getting warmer you know so he started losing weight but it still didn't uh, go as fast for him because uh, he had a lot of um, muscle mass, you know, so he yeah. couldn't lose it that fast. 
Uh, I suppose another tip that could help for people is to just, you know, like just drop some weight because then you're not that heavy on the track and it doesn't hurt your knees that much yeah. because he, he was feeling it a lot after every training, you know, and that kind of made us a little bit slower. We couldn't, um, you know, like prepare as intensive as we wanted to. We had to make stops more often. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's better because then you don't get injured, right? Yeah. So you, you can do yeah. more in the long term, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And look, like his knee issue might have been because of his weight, but it could also have been because his quads weren't strong enough or something like that. So again, a big part of it for me is is, is mobility. You know, uh, I'm not big into gyms, but I do I do some kind of gymnastics type training sessions. One one of them a week would be would be would be mm-hmm. good for a person to start off with just strength and mobility kind of thing, a little bit of stretching and and strengthening the core and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know that the, the, long, the weaker you the weaker your core is, the longer you run, you're just kind of crumpled over kind of oh. thing. So just focusing on a bit of mm-hmm. mobility. It's not all just running and cycling. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. A part. Yeah, makes sense. Do you um, okay core? I understand that. Do you do any back trainings to kind of keep your um, yeah yeah. Back so I, I, tra- I train with a local guy and Fitzgerald, and we do as I say kind of old school gymnastics. Mm-hmm. And he, he, yeah, so there, there there's some back stuff. Yeah, like. Uh, there's Russian Russian twists and there's there's a whole variety of mm. funny things that I can't remember the name of them. <laughs> but uh, like a mobility, I suppose not everyone's going to want or need to get a mobility coach, but one like one one can can really help kind of thing. Mm. If you get someone who really knows how to assess your body and they're able to pick out where where you're weak, where you're strong, that's that's really important. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I saw Andrew, uh, I was, first time I saw Andrew, he 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 started laughing at me. He said he didn't know how I was able, able to run 150 kilometers because my hip flexors weren't really strong and like, ah, okay. I didn't know much about my hip flexors at the time mm-hmm. so again you know if, you've the, if you can get the right person to assess you properly and tell you where you need to work on it mm-hmm. can save you a lot of time right? hip flexors just, are the muscles on the inner thigh correct mm-hmm. yeah okay. yeah yeah so I worked out hard and strengthened it for for four six or eight weeks and that really kind of loosened up something that was always tight in my back mm-hmm. so yeah yeah like someone that someone that really knows the body and then the kind mm-hmm. of mechanisms of the body is yeah. important Yeah, we should have done a little bit more of that now that I think about it. (laughs) Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see the full version, go to the Uncle Gold Podcast YouTube channel or watch the next clip.